the neutrophil becomes polarized and starts chasing the bacteria. The bacteria, bounced around by thermal energy, move in a random path, seeming to avoid their predator. Okay, so that's the very first part of an immune response. The point is, if that animal isn't full of water, isn't full of food, isn't full of rest, and isn't absolute absent of anxiety, that, that white blood cell just lays around, doesn't do anything. And that's, that's why, so every time when we're getting cattle ready to be vaccinated or processed or anything we're gonna do with them, We've got to prepare those cattle to, to respond to our, to our practices. It's just really, really important. I want to go through that really quickly by how we, how we achieve that. And we, we have to think about uh, the only way we can do that is create a, a scenario. This is how long it takes vaccines to work. You can see that it's almost 12 days before we ever start getting antibody production. And I, we, we revaccinated millions of feedlot cattle at day 12 and 13, and they got better. If we'd have just waited another couple days and taken care of them, they'd have gotten better anyway. The point is, we have to understand and educate ourselves on these kinds of things. It's really, really important. The first thing we have to do is take all the human voice away. First thing we do in a processing barn is create silence. When I first started doing this, I thought our problem in Kansas was that the cattle didn't understand Spanish. <laughs> and then I come to North Dakota, they don't understand that either. No, they, they, are, they don't like voice. Cattle like silence. A whistling at a cow is about like hitting her in the side of the head with a ball bat. Oh, it hurts their ears. So the point is, the first thing we do when we're processing or around cattle is we create silence. Well, if we take the human voice away, what do we have left to communicate with them? Just our posture, our position, our angles. So it's really important. Position and posture, if I'm standing here and I want a cow to walk here between me and these chairs, if I stand like this, it'll take a week for her to get courage enough to walk by here. But if I just kind of slump down and do this, in a couple minutes she'll come by. And when she comes back by, I can, keep, I can teach her to take pressure. But how you stand and what you do is so, so important. How far away you are. There's some breeds of cattle, and the lower cattle want you a quarter mile away. When Bud was walking those reindeer, I said, Bud, how far away were they when you first saw the first one do that? He said, I think it was two miles. And he just did that, and I said, what'd you do? And he said, I didn't have time to just step back, I just changed my angles. And I went another 300 yards, that same one did that again, and I just changed the angles. But in a period of 72 hours, he got within, he was the reindeer he could touch when they went in the corral. You can change that working zone. But if you don't see that, and he would have kept going, that two and a half miles would become three. Okay, so you have to really observe. So distance is important. Cattle want to see what is guiding them and they want to see where you want them to go simultaneously. And so when we think about that, the more we know about a cow's eye, the more we know about the cow. And so knowing this is the part of the animal that you work with. We've been read, we've, we've read where the shoulder is the point of balance. The shoulder is something you orient yourself, but the shoulder is mostly to keep the front of the cow off the ground. This is the part of the animal you're working with. Okay? Always, always know where that is. If you can't, if you can't expose yourself to that, the cow doesn't know where you are. Why did the creator make this pupil horizontal? Why did he put the eye on the side of the face? Yes, sir. Yeah, so she can see peripheral vision. Beautiful. And when she's grazing, she has 360 degree peripheral vision. Isn't that amazing? 
Now when she picks that head up, it's only about 285. Okay, it's really, really amazing. Now that's beautiful depth or uh, peripheral vision. How good is their depth perception? Not very good, because they can't see how far away you are. That's why cattle always do this before they go through a gate. Their head always does this. That's why you never, ever stand still in a pen of cattle. I used to ask people, stand still. Well, I'd drive them crazy. They don't know where you are. Anytime you're with a set of cattle, you've always got to be doing that. Always move. If you're a horseback, just move his head, move his head. That, they'll just come to you. But if you stand like a post, wow, they'll tear the fence down. Knowing about this eye is really important. So we have a, instead of a, a point of balance, we have a point of focus. We work with the eye. And this is what you've got to understand is the cattle have to see what is guiding them and they have to see where you want them to go. There's a squeeze chute in front of this red alley and I was preg checking cows. I'd send Lisa back to bring the next cow. And she'd stand by its shoulder and I'd go, Lisa, what are you doing there? And she said, well, the shoulder's the point of balance. Well, I said, you're gonna tear her head off. <clears throat> Never go past the eye when you're bringing cattle into a chute. It's just too, too far. So uh, this is an example of that. We took an alley that we couldn't see out of and we made a window. And watch this boy in this green shirt. He used to go clear, clear back behind that, uh, that no back to bring the next one. Now he just goes by the eye of the first one and walks with that animal. And this works really well if you don't have anybody along the snake or the alley. There's no people, we have everybody at the chute and nobody between the tub and the chute. If people are standing along there, all the cattle stop. So you gotta have everybody stationed. Just back by, one eye, walk by. If you go past, past that shoulder, you'll tear, they just they try to follow you. Right there, half a step is perfect. Half a step is just perfect. Really, really important to understand these things. Uh, position is really important. Um, it's this is really critical. This is a this is a guy tearing the hearts out of cattle. He's he's telling these cattle to go by him, and he and he they have to go left. And his position is telling the cattle to go right. The, all of these cattle know he doesn't either. He doesn't know or he doesn't care. About a third of them hit their shoulder on that post and they have to turn loose of their right eye and, and abandon him and they don't, they don't know where to go. If you ever see this happening at a dairy, at a sale barn, at a feedlot, please ask that man to get on the other side of the cattle. That, that's a universal language that we've all got to understand. Really, really important. If you're just counting cattle, it doesn't matter. Uh, he'll, he'll count this next bunch. If you're just going straight, it's okay. How do, you, how do you slow cattle down? Go with them. So he'll back up with them. How do you speed them up? You go against them. Really simple, really simple. But please help each other learn. This, this man in the blue shirt understands this. He'll, he'll come and empty this little spot. And he's, uh, he used to have a hot shot in each hand and we've been weaning him. Now he's down to a paddle and a stick. And we're going to cut his paddle off, and then pretty soon we'll cut his stick off, and it'll just be him. But and he will watch. You don't need all that stuff. The minute the front starts, he just stops. He doesn't go any further. That's enough. And he just goes sleepy-headed there. Look at that perfect circle. That's just poetry. That just changes cattle. Just changes cattle. Whether it's a pasture, whether it's a feedlot, whether it's a sale barn, help each other understand position. It's really, really important. Those cattle were a lot easier to sort. They were a lot easier to load. That's the principle of a bud box. It's a principle of any sorting system is position, position, position. This is a, this is a feedlot where this uh, processing crew uh, re-implants cattle and they won't go, they won't go back to the uh, bunk and eat. The, the other crew gets cattle, re-implant cattle to gain, eat more than they did the day before. And this, look what he's doing. He's sending these cattle left, but he's telling them to go right. And so 
it's just so critical. Where should he be? He should be on the other side of those cattle in that empty slant. Any, anybody, everybody understand that? It's really, really important. Position, position, position. So the gears and cattle are pretty simple. Um, so think of a rail. So how do you slow cattle down? Think of a railroad track. Parallel motion stops cattle. You watch a border collie. You watch a quarter horse. How do you, if this is a cow and this is a horse, how do you stop a, ho a cow? Parallel. Every time you do this, you'll stop. Whether you're, whether you're here, here, or here. If you're perfectly parallel, she'll stop. Okay, how do you go with a cow and get her to continue then? This is continue. Okay, so this is stop. This is continue. What is hurry up? So hurry, stop, continue. So when you go home, just practice that. It's just so easy. Uh, and I'll show you. So, so if you if you want a cow to to hurry, then then you go against her, okay? Like that boy was doing in front of the chute. One of the things that Bud, I would always go in a pin of cattle and I'd say, Bud, where should I be? And he said, if you'll hesitate and count to five, all the cattle will tell you where they want you. And it's taken me almost 17 years to figure out what he meant. So Jared's going to go get that yellow steer standing down that hole. And the gate's up the hill. He always stays between the gate and the steer. That steer moved once, and he said thank you. He gets closer, moves again, says thank you. And look, at it, look at him say, what can I do for you? Okay, if you step back and the steer steps to you, he's yours. And you can just go way out to the side and you can go to the gate with him. But it's really, really amazing that this young colt and this boy and this steer can go through the gate and the rest of the cattle just pretty much stay the same, just stay the same. Now, he'll get up to the top of the hill and the steer will wait for him at the gate. There he is. The gate swings inside, so he's got to move him out of the gate. So he pushes on. Watch how he stops this steer. When this horse is perfectly parallel, that yellow steer will stop. There, good. Okay, the steer wants Jared to go closer to the fence, but he doesn't want to bother those other cattle, so he side passes. Side passes, side passes, okay? It's parallel, stop. What do you want? Turns him around. There's a thousand th times when you're working with single cattle at home, this is a really neat thing to practice. If you stop him and his front feet are together, his parking brake set. He'll set there, he'll stay there for 15 minutes and you can go to the gate. You go to the gate, and when we opened the gate, we used to circle around and push on their hip. Now we just go straight by their eye. He'll just ride straight by that animal's eye, and when his right knee is right at the front of that animal's eye, that's far enough. Whoa, right there, whoa. Okay. That steer would rather be outside with Jared than inside with all of his buddies. It's just amazing. This is what we used to see uh, at, as, at weaning time. And the things we're talking about have changed that. These calves were unloaded about one o'clock in the morning this about 9.30, and they're still doing that. That's enough of that. How, how much are they eating? How much are they drinking? How much are they resting? Wait, the reason we used to tolerate that is it looks hopeless, doesn't it? How many of those calves do you have to change to stop that? 
Only three or four. There's only, it's like a church or a school or a community. There's only three or four troublemakers in that whole herd. And if you take the motion out of the cattle with anxiety, the, all the, those cattle don't want to follow around and ball like that. They want to lay down. And if you just change the three or four troublemakers in about two seven minute lessons, everything's quiet. But my bud was up there in Canada. That's why he moved to Benkelman, because our, our customers went up there and said, I don't know what he did, Dr. Tom, but we watched him unload cattle on Monday morning that were screaming. And by 8.30 Tuesday morning, they were silent, they were asleep, they were full of food, they were full of water, and they were full of confidence. We got to learn that. It only took two seven-minute lessons to create that. But the point is, you as a cow-calf producer should prevent that long before they get to the feed yard. This is the behavior we see at weaning in, in western Colorado and in Australia. This is a set of calves. Their mothers were loaded two hours ago and they're waiting for a truck. And once in a while one of them will say something, but these calves are standing there converting the grass and the milk they ate this morning. This is some, and that's just the way they acted at the feed yard. They come down off the truck, went straight to the bunk, started eating and drinking, laid down, never missed a minute. How did we train those cattle? We trained them when we tagged them. We trained them when we branded. We trained them when we sorted. So we used things up. The biggest thing was, uh, have you ever heard of fence line weaning? Okay, it's beautiful. The thing that about a fence line weaning is that there's some people that can't do that because they they don't have enough, enough fence or grass and you've got to move the cattle. So we've done things called a two-phase weaning and what we do is we, when we brand, if we're going to brand on Saturday, sometime on, during the week we bring the pairs in and we quietly sort those pairs off and instead of letting the babies back with their mothers, we put the babies in a holding pen over here and there's a little short alley with a calf cradle and we just open the calf cradle and we put the cows out in front of these calves and we just go to supper. And we go back the next morning and sometime in the night, all 130 of those calves have went through that alley, jumped through the cradle and they're out there sucking their mothers. Okay? When Saturday comes and we're really gonna brand whether we're gonna rope them or use the cradle, they already know the routine. They just go in that holding pen and you just everybody just stands at the cradle and the cattle just come jump in the calf cradle. And then when we turn them out, we don't let them run with their mother. We put about a little set of panels and we work about 50. Then while we're filling syringes or cleaning our hands, somebody's at the panel to let the babies go with their mothers. Okay, that's phase one. Phase two, when we pre-wean vaccinate, we use that same crowd, it's just handy there, but instead of having a cradle there, we have our squeeze chute. We bring the calves in, they know how to be sorted. They come right up to the chute, we vaccinate them, but we don't let the calves go back with their mother. We ask them to stay apart from their mother one full night. And my wife's out there, I'm never home, she's out there the next morning and lets them back with their mother. Sometime between pre-wean vaccination and this and regular weaning, if you can do it one more time, that's what that's all that changed those black cattle. I was thinking about how we do things. It's just amazing. I, I want to thank Jerry, a, a Wolf Cattle Company, Riverview Dairy, Casey. It's been an absolute honor. Uh, Dr. Kip and I uh, go to so many places where we work really hard, Jerry, and there's almost no progress. And this organization is opposite of that. We go do some things and you've got to go really fast to keep ahead of these people. And that's an absolute blessing. And thank you very much for the invitation.